Here we go! Welcome to the Knitting Samurai Plus One Video Podcast. I am your host, Steph. This is episode 56. I don't know how many tries I've tried to record this. Maybe we'll just call it seventh try here. Um, I can't seem to get this right. <laughs> and it's 56. And there was Expectant Knitter Podcast before this with 40-something episodes. I've done this a few times. Recording an intro is not a hard thing to do. <laughs> this past week was my cousin's graduation. <clears throat> she is my only cousin on that side of the family. And as I've said before, everybody loves Lauren and Lauren loves Roland. So we went up to, <clears throat> we went with my parents and stayed with her parents. <clears throat> Excuse me. For about five days. Not about, for five days. And that took a huge chunk of time. And Things did not go as I expected. They went really well, and it was so much fun to be all together, and I'll tell you more about that later if you're interested. But um, it sort of delayed my recording. So here it is. I believe it's June 12th. Maybe it's the 11th. Whatever that Tuesday is. I have the day off, so <laughs> I don't need to pay attention. Uh, <laughs> and here we are together. We're sitting at the dining room table. I'm going to try really hard not to touch it. Because I know it can shake the camera, so we'll see how I do. Um, and before you ask, I am wearing my Sand and Sea Chalette by Alada Decos. I knit this last year, right about this time. Um, it was I bought the yarn at the yarn shop near SSK House of Yarns, I think is was the name of it. And I cast it on at SSK using Malabrigo sock. Colors were very hard for me to say, but they're listed on my RAV page. And it's knit on US size 5, 3.75 millimeter needles, and I love it. It's a really, really lightweight shawl. Um, I very seldom wear it. I don't know why, because the colors are gorgeous. I think it's just sort of an awkward light for me, these little end bits. I'm never really sure what to do with them, and they're, um, I blocked them pretty severely, so they're, they're kind of awkward shaped. You see what I mean? But it's very nice and drapey, and it is 5 a.m. I don't know if I said that in this time go around. And I got up and got ready, and I just wasn't feeling... I feel, felt like I needed a little extra layer, and this was on the bottom of the shawl stack, so it won. <laughs> so, let's jump into what's currently on my needles. I know last week I showed you lots of FOs, and you guys just... You're awesome. Thank you for all your encouragement. You made me want to, like, oh, knit as fast as I can, and show lots of finished objects, and it was fun. So, thank you. Thank you for that. Um, first up... Let's start with the Michael Moss mitts, which are by Cicely Glauick McDonald. I showed them to you last week. Here they are in the Best of Knit Scene book. Um, really great. I believe it's a worsted weight that the, the, the recommended yarn. Yep, a worsted weight yarn knit on US size 6. And mine was knit with Alpaca Plymouth, no, Plymouth Baby Alpaca DK. And it just wasn't the right fit. The yarn was really drapey. If you remember, last week I showed it to you and I had knit three inches and ripped back and then another three inches. And it's just, there were too many holes. I made a mistake in the ribbing portion of it. Like, ugh. so I fried it. So those are gone. Don't look for those. No fault of the pattern, totally fault of me. I will probably attempt them again using a heavier weight yarn. Definitely a worse than weight because the um, Plymouth Baby Alpaca wanted to be knit on a four for me anyways, probably a three or a four, even though the ball band said a six. I am a pretty loose knitter. So that brought me to my next book looking for um, fingerless mitts in it. And this one is Knitting 24-7 by Veronica Avery. And in that I found the 1965 Arm Warmers, also by Veronica Avery. I don't, is this all the whole book by her or is it a collection? I'm not sure, but this pattern happens to be right here. So there you go. Hopefully I'm not giving too much away. That's how they look. Really, really pretty. I selected... What made me want to do this? Uh, I got my club shipment of Into the World. And as you know, it's a Game of Thrones theme. So here's the first one that we received, which is Sansa very pretty. And here's the second one that um, I just recently received. 
and that's called Godswood. It's a very North themed club I'm seeing here. And when I opened the package for Godswood, I, this was put aside. I didn't know what it looked like. But I thought that it looked exactly the same or very similar to Sansa. And um, it motivated me to want to knit some of my Into the World Club yarn because I've been in the club for, oh, close to a year, if not a year. Yeah, I've been in the club for a while. I love all the colors. I've only knit with one of them. And that was a single fingerless mitt. Like, I didn't even knit a pair of socks or something or a shawl. So I saw this, but I didn't have time before we left to go to graduation to ball it up and research. But it made me want to knit with some of my hand-dyed yarn. So, thinking about those fingerless mitts, I went and pulled out some three Irish girls that I have in the sport weight base, which is that pattern calls for sport weight yarn. So this is the Giving Tree in the Kells work. Uh, it's this glorious green and brown yarn, okay? So it's like an emerald green and a brown. And the part that I absolutely love about this yarn is there are points in it where it's a, like a, um, an autumn amber color where the two meet, and then there are points where they just meet, and that's it. That yellowy overlap is glorious, okay? <laughs> I don't know why I'm telling you that, but I have to, because I, I think it's very important about this yarn. So... I chose this yarn, which is really, if you think about it, yarn is normally dip, uh, dyed in, in a big um, loop, in a big circle. And so, theoretically, I don't know how she did it, but I'm thinking that she put green on one side and brown on the other side. Or she alternated green and brown sections, some sort of way. Well, for classy mitts like this, classy, I'm calling them classy, for classy mitts like this, I would really rather not have pooling, striping, or anything of the sort. The solution to that is to not knit with a two-color dyed yarn. To knit with a yarn that's either semi-solid or solid, or a yarn that is, you know, let me take the ball band off this, that has, like, if you look at this skein, you can see there are four colors. There's the gray, the teal, the purple, and then the um, rose color. So... And if I open it, yeah. So you can see that this one would also more than likely pull because of the way it's dyed. Which I'm not going to go into all of that. But you're going to knit the yarn and then you're going to hit a gray section. And then you're going to knit the yarn and hit a gray section again. Right? So you knit this side, you hit gray. You knit this side, you hit gray. So that would more than likely cause uh, some sort of pooling or striping, flashing, whatever. Depending on the number of stitches you use. Right? Because that controls everything. So, you see where I'm going? There's some regret in this project. I, um, the pattern is very fun to knit. There are one, two, three, four different stitch patterns in it. So there are four different sections. To sort of keep your interest, the way it's constructed is um, in the round for portions, and then when you're doing the hand, you do go uh, back and forth. You switch to rows. So that's fun. There's lots of fun things about this. And the length of these, look at them. They are gloriously long, and it's just a statement piece. What I'm trying to say in my very verbose way <laughs> is that, and it's funny because I really don't think of myself as verbose, but yeah, I am, <laughs> um, is that I should not have chosen a two-color yarn for this, right? Because they have so much potential and my yarn choice is just wrong. So I was walking around this morning thinking about, well, what should I have chosen for this? And I'm thinking something more along the lines of, this is a cakewalk yarn. And she does more of this flattery looking dye effect. Um, this colorway is Rhinebeck. And that's a brown with pops of like a teal and a gray, all kinds of variation in there, but it's more of a semi-solid color. So that would have been a better choice. Or even, um, well, maybe not, now that I'm thinking about the effects of, I, I know that um, Socks That Rock is dyed in a very similar manner. At least when I look at the way the skins are laid out, laid out, I have no idea what these people do for technique, but when I look at the way they're laid out and I look at the way they knit in the round, they're very similar, so that probably would have caused the same flashing pooling. So this might not have been a good choice, maybe more of a tonal here. 
because the, I'm guessing this mustard color would pop to your eye because it's um, a different tone. Anyways, so that's my thinking on this. So I knit one of these glorious, I think it's called a gauntlet when it's this long. Um, let's talk more about the actual pattern itself. So this, oh no, there's nothing else to talk. Well, I guess there is. So I knit this on US 2's 2.75 millimeter needles. And you can see there's this cool ribbing effect down here. There's some, um, I don't know what you call them. There's a moss stitch section. There's, it goes back to that and then more moss stitch up here. I was going along gangbusters, had a great time knitting this. And then I got to the thumb section and thought I knew what I was doing and didn't read the pattern. So this portion is not according to pattern. <laughs> I think her design after I, so I knit the thumb portion and then was looking at how to rejoin it for working on the round. And that's when I realized, oh, I, I was supposed to add stitches and do a fancy edging for the thumb opening. And I did not do that. So it's very messy. I'm going to pick up around the edge and, you know, do a couple rows just to tighten it up a little bit because that is very far down. Um, I had thought that these would be a test knit. I would knit them for me and then knit a pair in the cream color for uh, Vanessa since I frogged the pair I was knitting for her, but not really crazy about that idea. I think I'll be, this section right here is not as much fun to knit as you might think. <laughs> and they're long. And so I'll probably knit this pair for myself or the gift box and then uh, move on and find a different pair for her just because it's been done, you know, and I'm not gonna wanna knit a second pair right away. I might wanna knit another pair in a year from now, but not right now. And they're kind of warm, like, whew, I'm getting hot, all these hand knits on. So those are my fingerless mitts. 1965 Arm Warmers by Veronica Avery. <clears throat> and I've read the write-up in here about them, and it's really cool. They're really cool. I like them. I, and, yeah. So, there you go. <laughs> I have, I'm trying to stay organized. There's a lot of things on this table in front of me. So, okay. <laughs> Next up to show you, so we went over the the arms, let's move on to the feet, the feet portion of the show. So I have finished, I'm saying that, I have no idea, I haven't looked in this bag in a while, in a few days. So I did finish the first sock, and these are a 2x2 two two plain rib sock. They are for the self-striping knit along with the stockinette zombies, and... So the first one's finished, and I have a toe of the second one. Um, they are for someone with wide feet, so I am doing 68 stitches instead of the usual 64. Ooh, that's not a lot of extra, but I do knit that Patton's Croy. I think it's more of a sport weight. They disagree with me. Um, I do knit that on US 1.5, 2.5 millimeter needles. So I go up a needle size from my normal sock knitting needle for these. So those are on the needles, and then when we went up for graduation, I was crazy lady. I talked to all my friends and said, okay, I have an almost two-year-old, 21-month-old, and we have seven and a half hours one way and seven and a half hours the other way. Now I know exactly how far it is. What do I do? And everyone said, drive at night. Go two hours before bedtime, get a special dinner full of fat and stuff that'll knock him out, and leave drive in the dark. Well, driving at night, driving at night is fine, but arriving late at night was not in the plans. Like, if we could have shifted and left a day earlier, it would have been fine. We would have done that, but it wasn't going to work. So, crazy Stephanie set the alarm thinking that, well, if we can't drive at night at night, we'll drive at night in the morning. <laughs> I set the alarm for three, like quarter of three, here comes Mac quarter three in the morning and we were on the road by 3 15 <clears throat> and did you know they do construction at night they do construction and so between here and my parents house we hit three different um, spots of night paving or whatnot I don't know what they're doing but with the big giant lights out and the um, excavators catapults whatever cat caterpillars and the steam papers and men everywhere in those reflective outfits. He was so excited. <laughs> you, I can pick up Roland and he'll stay asleep until we get 
to the bottom of the stairs. And then he, I think the motion of the stairs and like the temperature change going from upstairs to downstairs, he's usually he'll usually wake up and look around. And so he was very quiet except when we went through the construction and then he was screaming. And then he fell asleep with a sc happy screaming. I say screaming. He was like, truck, truck, truck. Meanwhile, Steve's in the front seat trying to sleep. Um, but at about 4.30, Roland went back to sleep. And he slept until 6. So that was great. And then we drove for longer. And he had about an hour in the car where he was not so happy. And that was a straight portion with just trees on the interstate. Like, nothing to look at. The rest of the way, we looked at tractors, we looked at flags, we looked at school buses and 18-wheelers, and we just talked. And he played a little bit on my iPad, but mostly he was looking out the window, pointing to things. And we did stop several, several times along the way just to give him, you know, let's run around for a minute, and let's eat. And <laughs> I didn't, sorry, we did turn around in one parking lot in a John Deere parking lot just to go back to the university to um, try and get a gift certificate and it didn't work out but so we turned in it and he was just like oh my god this is heaven tractor heaven just like truck 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 so anyways the point of all of this long chatter is to say that at six o'clock when Roland woke up Steve woke up and so we got breakfast and we switched drivers and at that point I was so excited to be like oh my god I get to knit the rest of the way because that's how it works with us if he's awake, he's driving. Because I'm knitting, so why not? He's very good about that. So I got very excited and cast on for a new project. And I started working on socks, of course. Well, it needed to be something portable. So these are, uh, or this yarn is opal, which I haven't used in quite some time. Um, this is opal save the seas colorway. Here comes Linus. It's a cat parade. <laughs> so there you go. Um, save the seas colorway. Here's what it looks like in the skein. I'm, I think it's self-striping enough. I was unsure at first, but I mean you can clearly see that there's a pink, orange section. There's a blue section, orange, pink, blue. So I'm hoping it'll qualify. The yarn. I mean I'm not doing anything. The yarn is doing it. So just knitting a two by two rib, watching a cat walk through all my stuff. Can you get down, please, sweetheart? Thank you. Um, two by two rib. Yeah. So I made it to about here, and then we got to my aunt's house, and then I worked on this during graduation, and then I worked on this on the ride home. And by the time we were doing the ride home, which we left at the end of the day, we left at 4.30 to come home, and Roland was... He wasn't feeling so great by that point. He came down with a cold and he was just kind of like, mm. and he slept a lot of the ride. So that was great. <laughs> but I did have to give him Tylenol and he wasn't feeling very hungry. And yeah. So less great. But I do have to tell you. Okay, last Roland story because there isn't going to be a Roland video this week. So I'll just give you one more story. We stopped in um, Orno on the way home to gas up the car. It's Steve ran into the gas station to go to the bathroom and next door is a Wendy's. And so when I finished gassing up, I got in the car. This is the only part I drove on the way home. Drove down the street into the Wendy's to go get a, what are they, Frosties? Whatever their little ice cream smoothie thing. It's not smoothie, but ice cream um, is. And so I got in the car and I started driving away and Roland started screaming, da, 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 da. Like, watch out, you're forgetting him. And then we got to the street, and he still, he must have screamed it like five or six times at me. And we get to the street, and I turn, and he could see the ball of the green light in front of us, which he knows that when you see a green light, you say, go dogs, go, from the um, P.D. Eastman book. So he sees the green light, and then he goes from screaming, da, 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 like you forgot him, go get, stop, to... Go, dog, go! Go, dog, go! It's like, if you're not going to go get him, just go fast. It was hilarious. And then Steve walked over and got in the car. And it was really funny. To look. Yeah, a little wild rolling. So, there you go. Those are the socks I worked on for graduation. So, those are my graduation socks. And um, I'm knitting them for my size foot, size 11. But my cousin also wears a size 11. And... I think that might be a nice, like, in the fall when she heads off to school to just send her a care package and say, hey, I knit these for you while you were graduating. So, there you go. 
I'm gonna pause. Oh, yeah. was volunteering to take over the rest of the show. He was sitting. I'm sitting on the edge of my chair, and he was sitting in the back. But it turns out he's not much of a knitter, so I guess I'll finish. Um, <laughs> last thing on the needles. I know it's a triumphant return of the grace. So I had. Oops, it's triumphant, but I'm halfway through a row. I guess I'll finish. Um, I wanted to bring a larger stockinette stitch project up there with me, and wasn't really feeling motivated to knit a baby blanket, although we are doing a baby blanket knit along over on the discussion thread, rav board, whatever you want to say, go over. If you're knitting one, there's lots of encouragement. I've seen so many cool, you know, the crochet baby blankets are really catching my eye. I don't know why. It's, it's kind of strange to me because I like to knit. But, um, so, I gotta have the morning coffee here, folks. Anyways, um, yeah, so I wanted to bring a larger stock in a project, and I didn't really want to do a baby blanket, even though Emma Sparkle is due. Hmm. Well, her baby shower is the 20th, so clearly I'm giving her the pie shower at this point, because I'm not giving her the little star blanket, because that one's for another one of the girls. But anyways, I, um, stock in a and so I thought, I looked at both of the Peasy and the Grace at the spot they're at in progress, even though I haven't touched them in probably two months. Like, they've just been sitting in my yarn closet. Yes, I do have a closet under the stairs in my house that is just for yarn and knitting books. Anyways, we'll talk about that some other day. Um, and so I decided to bring the Grace with me. So this is the Grace by Jane Richmond. I would show you a picture, but... It's a sport or fingering weight pattern. I want to say sport would be my guess. And I'm knitting it with worsted weight yarn. So I heavily modified the pattern. Safe to say. Um, you can see there is this. Oh, and I messed up this lacy part so it doesn't follow exactly. So it's, it's loosely based on the Grace by Jane Richmond from the island. When I do finish this, it will count towards my um, 13 patterns from books. <laughs> but... Because I am following her instructions for increases, decreases, I'm just not knitting my size because of the gauge difference in using a worsted weight yarn. So, and it's a really interesting, the pattern gives you um, charts with measurements, and so it's, it's kind of easy to MacGyver your way into, oh, I'm using a different weight yarn, so here's what my gauge should be, but here's what my length should be at different points and whatnot. So, I have knit, I want to say another half inch and a half on this. I didn't do too, too much, but I got some more progress in on it, and it reminded me, yeah, mindless stockinette's great. By the time we were coming home on Sunday, Saturday, we came home on Saturday, by the time we were coming home, my fingers were hurting. I'm not, well, seven and a half hours in the car, and he drove the whole way, and I want to say five hours in, yeah, I couldn't knit on those socks anymore, so I pulled this out at that point. Because I pretty much knit on the sock because it was so portable. Every time we got in the car and went somewhere to visit somebody, or because a lot of my family, or I should say my extended family lives up there, so there was lots of visiting and seeing people and whatnot. And, and coffee runs. What else do you do when a bunch of my female relatives are together but go get lots of coffee? <laughs> Um, so this wasn't really portable for those times, but it is getting some love. I feel like I've reported for just like week after week after week, no love, no love, no love, because I wanted to make myself be accountable for the sweaters that are on my needles and not have them just languish, which there is a, I'm just percolating. And I have to tell you that I have a linen sort of shell. It's a sleeveless sweater that I was working on four years ago. It's this beautiful purple color. I think it's knit across and it wraps at the front. So it's knit this way. And um, I'm kind of itching to pull that sweater back out. I was quite a ways into it. I was definitely past the first armhole. Um, I'm itching to pull that back out because it is lace knitting and I'm not that different of a size than I was and it could still work. And it would be nice to have a summer weight sweater. So, 
Very cool. We'll see. But the Grace is being knit with Tacky Yarns, New Tweed. This is a discontinued yarn, but I did want to just show it to you. Um, the colorway is 033. And the Grace is being knit on US size 7s, 4.5 millimeter needles. And that's it. The high chair is now empty. I used that as my stool. So we must be at the end of the show. No, we're not. We're not. We're not. I forgot. Okay, so the baby blanket. I have to tell you that I just have to tell you all these things. Um, my friend Jeff at work had the baby. Well, he didn't have the baby. His wife did. But he was born 10 days early, so it was a nice surprise. And it was a he. So this is the, the gray and yellow baby blanket I knit. I just felt like it was going to be a boy. I would never have knit those colors for a girl. But they didn't find out what they were having, and... They told everybody they didn't find out, but they painted the walls gray and teal. And I was like, you know what? I think they're going to have a boy. We have four pregnant people. Two of them are having girls. Two of them don't know what they're having. I'm going to guess those two are boys. So really excited. His name is Bodie Grayson. Isn't that cute? Okay. So just wanted to tell you that. Um, we are doing a baby blanket knit along. And there were, so every month until October, post your finished object pictures. Um, one for each month, and you get a, a, a ticket, a, a spot, I guess, for a prize draw. The May, for the month of May, we had seven finished baby blankets, yes, because I was the first post, so there were eight. Okay, seven finished baby blankets, and yeah, so that's it. So, I... am going to make sure I have it up. Okay, I'm going to random.org. I'm going to hit generate two through eight and blanket number four came up so if i flip over to the group and this is for the first month of may is going to be a ravelry pattern of your choosing so just drop me a pm and let me know what you would like and number four was avocado sheep who is hold on please hold on avocado sheep that is laney from Maryland. So Lainey, get in touch with me and tell me what you would like. Um, I'm going to share her, her project here. She did this amazing cabled blanket. So you can see it at the top and then there's a closer view of the cables. So yay Lainey! Get in touch with me, Avocado Sheep, and I will give you a pack. So, um, the month of June is going full swing ahead. There are several in-progress blankets. If you know someone or would like to knit yourself a baby blanket, join in. Have a good time. There's crochet, knitting, anything goes. Weaving, I don't know, whatever. Whatever you'd like, just, you know, share what you're working on so we can all get inspiration from it. And then, that's it. That was the last thing. Officially, I'm done. I'm out. Have a great 10 days or so until I see you again and enjoy what's going on in your knitting world. Take care.